So I'm here to talk to you about building a team. Matter of fact, I'm going to talk to you about building a launch team and a core team. But first, let me say this. Uh, of course, we honor everybody who's ever gone and planted a church with the parachute old school method. Uh, but the reality is, is that the dream that God's put in your heart to reach your city is going to be at best accomplished if you can build a team. I always love thinking about Matthew 4 and 18 when it says that Jesus, when he began his ministry after that time of consecration for 40 days in the desert, the very first thing he did was start building his eventual 12 person team. Uh, and again, you've got a great dream. If you're wanting to plant a church, uh, I've had that dream of planting a church. Uh, but the team uh, is really a key element to seeing that dream come alive. And so I want to talk to you today about the two teams that you really need to build to most effectively plant a church. And here's the names. You need to build a launch team and a core team. So when we're talking about building these two teams. Uh, again, they're essential for eventually launching your church, but let's talk about launch team uh, and, and we'll talk about the differences. Your launch team is going to be a team that's open to anybody. Uh, it's going to be temporary in nature, so it's going to dissolve after you launch. And it's really going to be focused on outreach in the community. I like to think about the launch team, like in the world of book publishing, they build, you know, launch teams, people that, you know, help share the book on social media and tell everybody about it. Your launch team is really this community oriented outreach team that's going to help you just make connections in your city uh, to really build a, a crowd that you can eventually turn into a church. So, so that's your launch team. Again, it's temporary, it's outreach oriented, and it's open to anybody. Your core team, on the other end, uh, is going to be hopefully a more long-standing team. These are going to be people uh, that are apostolic. Uh, they do believe what you believe. And this isn't just an outreach-oriented team. This is a team that's going to be discipleship-oriented. So people you're kind of building together. Think about like an established church. This would be like your leadership team, your ministry staff. And it may not be a whole bunch of people, uh, but when you launch a church, you do want to start developing a core team of people that can help you actually do ministry and minister to the people that God's bringing you. So again, the launch team is outreach oriented. It's kind of open to anybody. It, it's just helping you reach your city. Your core team is more closed circuit, apostolic people that are helping build the ministry. But you're trying to build both of these teams simultaneously uh, so that you can do outreach and you can also disciple. So let's dig into the specifics of building a core team. Um, first of all, when you're building this core team of you know, apostolic ministry-minded people that can really help you build this church, you want to start this process a year out at least from the time you plan to launch, a year out to six months out, so that once you get into the phase where you're building a launch team and you're starting to reach your community, you have some of this team already in place to help you get that done. Um, I, I want to talk about kind of where to find these people. You know, first of all, look at your family and friends. Um, I found dealing with church planners, being a church planner myself, that a lot of times this core team will start with the the planter's family or, or maybe a, a mom and dad or sister. And so look at close family and friends, people you already have a connection with. Secondly, I would encourage you uh, to look for um, kind of overlooked but capable people. Uh, sometimes uh, there's people in churches that are gifted, they have character, but they're just not being utilized for whatever reason. Uh, we had success calling pastors and actually asking if some of those people that were maybe on the bench at their church could come help us. Uh, and you'll be surprised sometimes an overlooked but capable person uh, can kind of rise to the occasion if they will come help you plant a church. And then lastly, you know, look for people uh, maybe at the mother church or the sending church you're a part of. Uh, I know we had success. We had three or four families that the pastor that I I planted under sent with us to launch the church and you'll be surprised if you'll ask uh, that sometimes pastors will release people to come help you. I would encourage you by the way on that subject of dealing with a mother church and building a core team is you need to make sure to clarify with the lead pastor three buckets. Number one you need to make sure you know are you sending this person with me? Are they being sent to come actually help me and I'm going to pastor them and they're with me? Number two, uh, are they a borrow or are they on rent? 
Sometimes a pastor will release somebody for six months or a year, but they're expecting them to come back. And then number three, there's sometimes a category where a pastor doesn't know for sure which way to go. I really encourage you, I've told so many church planners this, make sure that if you're building a core team and you're taking some people from a mother church, that you clarify some of that uh, proactively so that you avoid any issues uh, as you get down the road. But your core team, again, uh, is gonna kind of be this ministry-minded apostolic group, and you wanna find them uh, in, in those areas we just spoke about. So let's shift gears to talking about building a launch team. And again, this is a more open-ended, um, temporary team that's just trying to help you make connections in your city. Um, and so different than the core team. And you're actually going to start this process more at like the six-month mark. Uh, so the core team's maybe a year out. This is more like six months out. You've got your launch date already set, which I want to encourage you, by the way, Pick a launch date and stick to it because anybody who's connecting to the vision at this point, they've got to have a North Star. They've got to have something that they're looking forward to, uh, a launch date that they're excited about. And so you got to make sure by the time you get to this launch phase that you've settled what day you're launching or doing your big launch officially for the church. Uh, but in terms of building the launch team, uh, first of all, I want to encourage you, you need to have some kind of momentum gathering event. I want to repeat that, momentum gathering event. Uh, I would encourage you to do this monthly or maybe bi-monthly, but this event that you do leading up to launch is all about just getting people in your community to know that you're starting a church. It's, it's trying to create that buzz and those connections around your community. And so uh, what we did, we actually did this in a, a coffee shop. You could do this in a YMCA. You could do this in a church building. You could do this anywhere. But we rented out a coffee shop and we did six what we called startup events which were just uh, really oriented towards uh, letting people know in our community what was happening. And what we did, and you could do something like this, we would have them come in and we would do 20 minutes of just connecting. And again, these are random people from our community. Some of them have never come to church before, but we'd come in and just connect with them for 20 minutes. And I always like to say, and you've heard it before, people don't care what you know till they know that you care. And we would just connect and let people know that we care for about 20 minutes. Then we would shift gears and we would shift from just a connection time to about 10 to 15 minutes of vision. And, and this would be me standing up and, and the room would kind of turn into a, a rows of chairs kind of setting. And I would you know, preach a sermon, if you will, but really I would just share the vision about what we wanted to do to impact our city. And you'd be surprised how even some people would come in the room and had never been to church, but they'd be compelled by the vision of, of touching lives and what Jesus could do in the lives of our city if we could build this church. And then the last 10 minutes of this event, we would do a time of response and just give people an opportunity. Uh, we'd play a song and just let them, uh, with a little connect card, we'd let them, you know, respond and tell us, you know, what they thought about it or how we could connect with them more. And through the process we had six months leading up to launch, we had hundreds of people come to these events. And by the time we launched, we had a Rolodex, if you will, of tons of contacts in our community of people that were living in our area that we got to call and reach out to for our launch service, uh, which ended up having uh, our very first launch service. We had over 300 people at our first service that were kind of built on those connections we made through that time. So I, I just kind of gave you a format of, again, you know, connection, vision, and response. That could be a loose format, uh, but I just encourage you, it's a really great way uh, to, to build a launch team. And we had a lady named Sheila, who never been to church before, joined our launch team. That doesn't mean she was a minister, that doesn't mean she preached, that means she got a t-shirt and she invited her friends to our stuff. Well, the first time she ever came to church was our launch Sunday. And Sheila got baptized that day and she had 10 of her friends, a whole row of her friends with her the very first time she came to church. And that's kind of a snapshot of what this launch team's all about. It helps maybe some people that aren't you know, strong apostolic yet get excited about what you're doing and you'll see life change in them as they buy into the vision of what God's doing through you. So that's how you build a core team and a launch team. So let me give you a few final FAQs, a few tips on core team and launch team building that I think are really important. Number one, just remember, 
this is spiritual. There's going to be spiritual warfare. So make sure, just like Jesus, before you go build a team, that you start with consecration and prayer. He prayed and fasted for 40 days before he ever built a team. That may not be what you do, but I'm encouraging you. You've got to be very prayerful about all of these decisions about who's going to be on your team and, and where it's going to be and, and how to do it. Uh, we have found that the team building element of launching a church has been the number one uh, cause for growth and the number one area of attack. So I just encourage you, be incredibly spiritual and prayerful. And then uh, I just wanted to give you a few things to consider when you're building the core team uh, or building this team, a few things to look for in, in people. You know, I always say, and I stole this from somebody, but it may be good for you, you want to look for people that are positive, uh, people that can bring energy into the room, can light up a room. When you're planting a church, you need light up the room people. You need people with potential. Sometimes some of your greatest people on your team uh, aren't there yet, but they've got the potential, and you've got to be able to see that. Some of my best team members weren't anywhere near where they are now when we first started, but I saw the potential in them. Number three is sometimes there's just personally, there's a personal value. Sometimes you just like somebody. I got people on my team, and I don't know why I invited them on my team. I just liked them. And don't ever forget that God builds his kingdom relationally, and sometimes he'll make you like somebody for a reason. And then number four, just production value. You need somebody that can just help you set up chairs, that can grind it out, that can get it done. And when you're building your team, always look for those four Ps uh, when you're team building, because if somebody can represent all four of those, you probably got a winner on your team. That's all I got uh, for building the team, launch team and core team. Uh, really hope it's been helpful for you. God bless.